What's happening guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how we can capture game footage using OpenCV and Python. In sort of keeping of the theme of working with games and building out machine learning for games, you might've seen some of the other videos on the channel so far. I figured it'd be interesting to take a look at how we might start interacting with different games using Python and OpenCV. Uh, if this is interesting, do let me know and uh, leave a comment below if you'd like to see this sort of extended out. But for now, let's take a deeper look at what we'll be going through. Alrighty, so in the name of doing a little bit of computer vision with our game, we're gonna be focused on three key things. We're gonna take a look at what dependencies we need to install in order to be able to interact or access our game environment. We're then going to use something called Pi Auto GUI to be able to take a screenshot of our computer screen to be able to capture that and process it using OpenCV. And then last but not least, we're actually gonna render it using OpenCV. Now, again, we could take, definitely take this further. You could actually build the control mechanisms, but for now, we're just gonna take a look at how we can capture that game footage. So, bit of a short one today. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, guys. So, what we're gonna go on ahead and do is grab frames from Timberman and bring them into OpenCV. Now, the reason why this is important and probably quite useful is that once we've got it inside of OpenCV, we could start to do a lot of additional processing. We could do object detection. We could do pose estimation. We could, I don't know, apply OCR to extract scores and stuff. So you could actually start doing a absolute ton of stuff when it comes to, I guess, building up on this fundamental skill that I'm gonna walk you through in this particular case. Now, just to show you that this is really just regular, like a regular Timberman game. It could literally be any other game that you wanted it to, but in this particular case, oh, not bad. Okay, I'm gonna, all right, cool, <laughs> 38, not too bad. But this is literally any game, right? So if you had um, like Minesweeper or if you had uh, Rocket League or something else, as long as you've sort of got a frame within your screen, you could definitely go and do this type of thing to be able to go and apply additional pre-processing and some computer vision. Now, what we're gonna focus on in this case is just really getting the game frame. We're not gonna take it much further, but if you'd like to see that, do let me know in the comments below. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. Okay, so what we're gonna do is first up, we need to import some dependencies. Let's break it up in terms of what we need to do. So we need to import some dependencies and then we're going to need to loop over the game frame. So we'll process it as a video and then we'll ideally need to render that to the screen. Now, initially what we're going to do is we're going to grab the entire screen, but we'll need to crop it out to just get the Timberman component. So what did we need to do? So we need to loop over the frames and then handle the rendering of the images slash video. Okay, so first things first, we need to import some dependencies. But before we do that, we actually need to install some dependencies. So there's three key dependencies that we're gonna need. These are OpenCV, Pi Auto, GUI, and NumPy. I'll explain why we need each in a sec. So we're going to install those using a simple pip command. So pip install Pi Auto GUI, OpenCV-Python, and what was the last one, NumPy. So Full command is pip install pi auto GUI. The second one is OpenCV Python, and the third one is NumPy. So pi auto GUI is going to be used to get a screenshot of our screen. It's just a really simple method. So it's pi auto GUI dot screenshot allows you to capture a full screenshot of your screen. The second thing that we're importing is OpenCV Python. So this allows us to do a little bit of computer vision and image processing. So that's exactly what we're going to use it for. Uh, and NumPy or, or NumPy in this particular case allows us to convert, or we're gonna use it to actually convert the output from Pi Auto GUI to an actual image or an array. So we can actually do some pre-processing there. So let's go on ahead and run that. I'm just gonna hit enter. Looks like no issues there. So we've gone and run that successfully and it doesn't look like we've got any errors to validate it. So I'm just gonna run pip list. And you can see we do in fact have Pi Auto GUI there. And what was the other thing that we went in and installed? Uh, OpenCV. So let's double check that. OpenCV-Python, that is there. And then NumPy there is there as well. Okay, cool. So we are good to go, I think. Let's leave that up. I'm just going to clear that. Okay, so now the first thing that we need to do inside of our Python script, so I've just created a new Python script called gamecap.py. You could name it whatever you want, just needs to be a Python script. So we need to import our dependencies. And remember, we installed three, we've got to import three. So I'm going to run import pyautoGUI. 
So that will allow us to use the screenshot method. Then I'm going to import uh, CV2. So that's how we import OpenCV. I know it's kind of weird. Don't ask me why, but that's how we import it. And then the last thing that we need is NumPy. So we're going to run import NumPy as MP. Cool. So three lines of code there. So the first one is import pi auto GUI. The second one is import CV2. And the third one is import NumPy as NP. So those are our three dependencies now imported. Cool. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually loop over the frame. So we're going to write a while loop and we're effectively going to be capturing our screen and then rendering it back to our user. So let's go on ahead and write this loop. So I'm going to write while true. And then we are going to use the pi auto GUI screenshot method. So pi auto GUI dot screenshot. And we're going to save that in a variable called screen. So this will effectively take a screen cap of our screen and return it inside of this screen variable. But this screen variable isn't necessarily a NumPy array. So we can't actually work with it as of yet. So what we need to do, so let's actually write some comments as we're doing this. So take a screenshot. Then what we need to do is actually convert it into a NumPy array because this is just going to make it easier when it comes to working with the OpenCV sort of interactivity. So we'll convert it to an umpire array. Output to a numpy array. So I'm just going to overwrite the variables screen equals mp.array and we're going to call it screen. And then, so what else do we need to do? So we actually need to re-render it back to our user. So this is where OpenCV is going to come back in. So we can then write what are we writing? Uh, CV2.im show. And we need to name our frame. So there's two uh, variables that we actually pass through. So the name of the frame and then the actual value that we want to render. So I'm just going to call it game in this particular, I'll uh, call it game cap. And then to that, we're going to pass our screen variable. So these three lines of code are effectively going to allow us to capture our screenshot and then render it back to our user. So while true, and then we've got a colon and then screen equals pi auto GUI dot screenshot. So this takes a screenshot of our screen. Then we're taking that screenshot and we're converting it to a NumPy array. So screen equals NP dot array. And then we're taking this variable, passing it into here. So really we could just create a new value and call it um, screen array just to make it a little bit clearer. And then we'll pass that to our CV2 dot I'm show method which is cv2.imshow. And then we name our frame. So I'll show you what, what that actually references in a sec. And then we're passing this variable into that to be able to show it back to our user. Now there's one last thing that we need to do if we're going to be using cv2.imshow. We need to use the cv2.wait key method to be able to give our frame a chance to re-update. So let's uh, write up that script now. So uh, cv2.wait key. So we are going to write uh, if cv2.wait key and then one, so this is the delay and zero X F F equals equals board Q zero X F F. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, then, so this allows us to actually pass through a key. So say, for example, we wanted to kill down our screen. We can actually just hit Q in this particular case and it's going to shut everything down. So we can run um, break. So we'll break out of our loop. And then we'll run, uh, the last thing that we'll want to do is actually close down the frame. So uh, we can run, uh, we'll create a comment, close down the frame. And we'll run cv2.destroy all windows. Okay, so let's take a look at the extra bits that we've added there. So we've added one, two, three lines of code. So the first one is if cv2.wait key one. So this gives us a delay in milliseconds. And then it checks whether or not we've hit the Q uh, letter on our keyboard. So if it has, then it's going to break out of our while loop. And assuming that we break out of our while loop, we're then going to run cv2.destroy all windows. So it'll actually close down the open CV frame. If we go on ahead and save this, and if we try running it, so I'm just going to run it as, um, how do we do so Python <laughs> and then gamecap.py. Okay, so that is running at the moment. So you can see it looks like a huge screen, but that is it over there. So right now, we've, because we've still got our code in there, it's looking like it's replicating. But if I move this over, you can see it's cascading and it's looking a little bit weird at the moment. And that's because we are rendering a frame cap of our frame cap. So it's going to be a little bit iterative. Now, in order to fix this, what we need to do is just isolate the segment of the screen that we actually want to return. So right now it's gone a little bit crazy. 
if we wanted to break out of this, all we need to do is hit Q. So rather than just leaving it like that, let's actually isolate this section here. Now, because we are just using a NumPy array, we can just isolate that region. So we can type in screen array, or we'll create a new variable. Um, so we'll call it cropped. Cropped. Add a comment. So crop out the region we want. And we're going to call it crop region. Set that equal to screen array. And again, you can play around with these values, right? So in this particular case, I'm going to try to isolate that over there. So we want, um, I'm trying to think what are going to be our dimensions. So let's just start off with 600 by 400, and then we want all channels. And then we're going to take this and update our cv 2imshow method. So what I've actually done there is I've just done some indexing. So I've called cropped underscore region equals screen underscore array. And then to that, we're actually cropping out regions. This isn't actually going to work. Let's go from there onwards. So this effectively means we're going to go 600 pixels from, is it height or width? We'll see in a sec. It's either height or width. And then we're going to go from 600 pixels on and return the rest, 400 pixels on and return the rest. So I'll isolate which one it is in a second. And then we've saved that inside of a variable called cropped underscore region. And we've passed that to our cv 2im show method down here. So if we go and run this again, we are now, are we isolating more? We're still getting a ton, aren't we? Cropped region equals screen array. Let's actually change this. So if we go, uh, let's get 400 to 500. I don't know if we actually saved that just then. Okay, so the, we've definitely cropped out. So this is obviously giving us a much smaller region now. Let's actually undo that. I don't think we actually saved it. So save that. And that okay so we've definitely cropped out a region now so you can see that this is the segment that we're actually getting and this particular case let's go uh 600 to 1 so we understand at least get a better understanding of or 600 to 610 so we get a better understanding of which is width and which is height so i'm just going to close this rerun it okay so that this first value is going to determine our height so right now we need to go from ideally it should be from like 0 to 600 What's the height of this frame over here? Uh, nope, let's go back. So 800 by 600. So it's 800 wide by 600 high. So we need the first 600 pixels. So we can do that. Save that. Run it again. Okay, so we've got 600 pixels down. So that looks about the same height there. And then what do we need? We need 800 pixels. Now I know my screen is what, uh, 19... 1920 pixels wide so we're going to want to go from trying to think now so we let's whip out the calculator so if we go from 1920 minus 800 so if we go from 1120 onwards and grab everything 1120 that should effectively give us the right frame size That is looking... Okay, so let's bring it over here. Okay, so we've successfully got that frame there. So I think it's a little bit short. We should probably go a little bit further. But you can see that by adjusting the crop region that we're taking out, we're getting our game frame in this particular case. And you can see that the color isn't quite right. I'm going to show you how to fix that in a sec as well. Let's quit out of that. Let's actually grab a little bit more. So let's grab 620. Okay, that's much better. So you can see that we're successfully accessing the game frame now. And if I move my keys, click buttons, you can see that we're definitely actually interacting. So let's hit play. Right, okay, so that we've successfully got it and it's reasonably quick. But what's the other thing that we wanted to do? So right now we've got uh, this weird coloring happening. And this is because of the way that OpenCV works. So it expects the frame to come in in the format BGR, but we're going to be passing it in as RGB. So this is all about color channel order. We can fix this relatively easily. So we're just going to quit out of this frame. 
Let's quickly take a look at what we actually wrote there. So this is the main line that we went and changed. So we wrote cropped underscore region equals screen underscore array. And then we've just gone and done some index slicing. So remember in this particular case, we are getting the first channel is going to be our height. The second one is going to be our width. And the third one is going to be our color channels. So if you want it to be gray, then you can condense this down into a single channel. But because it's a color image, it's represented as R, G, and B. Okay, but right now we are not getting valid colors back. So we need to convert the color channel order. So convert the color channel order. Uh, and we can use OpenCV to do this. So we're going to convert or create a new variable called um, corrected colors. And we're going to set that equal to cv2.cvt color. We're going to pass through our cropped region. And then we need to pass through the color conversion code. So this is effectively what color order we want to go from to. So we can call cv2.color and then we call uh, BGR, what is it? So uh, RGB to BGR. That should be about right. And then we need to grab this variable and pass that back to our cv2.imshow method. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let's try running that. Cool. So you can see that we've successfully got our colors now. So no, we don't want to join. All right. So we're successfully capturing our game frames now. So, and again, it's pretty quick. I mean, we probably could go a little bit faster. I've seen some people say that uh, by using Pi Auto or Pi Win GUI, like the actual native uh, Windows interactivity API, then it's a, it is a little bit faster, but I'm mindful that that necessarily isn't going to run on a Mac. You might run into a bit or a bit of a couple of issues if you're actually going to go on ahead and try to run this on Linux. But you can see that that is successfully capturing our game. So the next thing that we could take a look at doing, we might do this in a future tutorial if you guys are interested. Wow, I'm sucking right now. Um, it's, uh, wow, so high score of three. If we wanted to, you could actually try doing or passing some interactivity back, so sending keys to be able to actually control the game. But in a nutshell, that is the main goal of this tutorial done. So we've successfully captured frames and you can see that we, as we're actually going through and playing our game, we're accessing that using OpenCV. So again, who knows where we'll take this in the future. Um, but a key thing to note is, let's actually take a look at all our code. So we've gone and imported our dependencies. We've then gone and looped. And remember, there's a bunch of pre-processing that we can actually go on ahead and do to actually grab our region. So we first up took our screenshot, we converted it to a NumPy array. We then went and isolated the region that we actually wanted, corrected our colors in this particular case, and then re-rendered our image to the screen. And then you just need this cv2.wait key to be able to process the update for OpenCV. But that in a nutshell is everything done. As per usual, all the codes are going to be available via GitHub in the description below. Thanks again for tuning in guys. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. It really does help the channel. And I thank all of you for checking this out. Let me know what you think. Should we take this further? Should we maybe take a look at how we can actually interact with games? Maybe we should start integrating the object detection models that we've built previously into something like this. Um, I'm thinking we could potentially actually try to beat Timberman or what is it? I can't even remember what the name of the game is now. Uh, Timberman. <laughs> Maybe we could try to actually beat Timberman using something like an object detection controlled model or something along those lines. But anyway, thanks again for tuning in. Peace.